Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play LSD. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and in our last episode, the game broke. Seriously, I mean, you should go back and watch it if you didn't already, because the scenery stretched out twice over and everything just completely vanished. It was pretty great. Today, we begin with day 155, which... I forget what Pokemon that is. But that's okay, because... This is a video, apparently? I don't remember staring at crows before, so... Is this a new one? I mean, probably not, because the... Game was meant to have run every single video in one shot earlier. Except for this one, apparently. Because I absolutely do not remember seeing a cat before. What the hell? I like the sound of that music, though. It's kind of trippy. Though, of course, as soon as I say that, it ends. But, all good things must come to an end. Which, I'm sure, is something that poor people say to keep ourselves happy. Kind of like you can't buy happiness, you know? Alright, let's go again. Maybe try to say something nice and happy and cheerful or something. And I'm, I'm meant to be entertaining here, not depressing. <laughs> oh, hey, it's this area. Reminds me of something I found the other day, in fact. Like, if you okay, if you have Animal Crossing on the 3DS, you can share your house with other players as you walk past them. One of the most common themes you'll find is impossibly cute candy pink rooms full of all the saccharine sweet furniture, and then something horrible in the basement. And I recently found a room that created this exact scene in the basement of Animal Crossing New Leaf. Like, somebody took time to scroll writing all over the wall and floor textures. It was pretty great. I thought that this music played when you got to the pit. The game isn't breaking, is it? I mean, it, it is possible to force this game to break by playing many, many days in succession, usually without saving, because it fills the game's storage space, so it tries to draw from corrupted data, and the whole thing just falls apart. It's, it's really weird. I mean, this whole game looks really weird. It's got that classic PS1 era jank to it, you know? Cute little charm to its own, I feel. Or maybe I'm just having flashbacks to a dream I had recently where everything looked like a middle of the run PS1 game, and everyone had like 200 poly count or something, you know? It's glorious. Kickstarter needs to get on that, by the way. Nobody ever pitches games using PS1 models. It's all top-of-the-line Super HD, or 16-bit pixel art. Or like, cyanide and happiness stick figures, because drawing is hard! Is the skybox meant to stay still like that? It looks like the models are moving around me, rather than me moving around them. Kinda like when you stand on one of those moving walkways and it takes a little while to readjust. Or, it looks like Mode 7, if you want to go back to that. The background remaining static and everything else is just flying into view from the, the draw distance. How am I back on Mode 7 again? Maybe this is why everyone wants to do retro-looking games, you just automatically go back to it if you grew up with it. And see, okay, putting stuff in the sky like that, that is how you indicate that you're approaching the background. It's also how you indicate that you're near churning water, which means I'm in the waterfall area. Which in turn means I'm now going to seek out the fountain, and try to throw myself down that little gap in the middle. I love that little chain of logic that I've got going on. And I love how you can see those guys below the earth because they didn't really feel like modeling anything beneath the water. Okay. Squaring off against a mighty fountain. Let's let's see how this is gonna go. Well, there you go. And apparently made the skybox snap into a pink haze. Is that a new square? I I don't think it is. And is that new? When did I get that one in the middle of the screen? Possibly the end of the previous night's dream. I I don't know. Day 157, let's go. 
and we begin our reverential silence as we wait for the system to grace us with its first bout of gameplay. This is how cults get started, you know? Oh, hey, Blanket Town, how you doing? I hear water again. I wonder if I'm close enough to... Yeah, I think I am. Yeah. I'm gonna go around and see if I can find the little cove thing and drop through the floor. Except facing forward this time. Oh, and Sentryfish is back. I'm two for two, so that probably means that's how this game goes. You fall through the floor at the fountain, you find a giant fish to stop you when you get there the next time. I like how I'm able to formulate this hypothesis and test it, like, immediately, as opposed to the big man in the room, which I've been trying for, like, 12 gameplay hours now, or whatever the total one of these videos is. I said 8 hours a short while back, but turns out I have way made way more of these than I thought I had, so there you go. Speaking of going, where did my fish go? Not you. But I'm pretty sure it was above the little cove. That's where its spawn box is meant to be, and that's... At the very least, the general area where I saw it, but it isn't here right now. How bizarre. Oh, and did you see that? I stepped up a little bit before I fell through the ground. That probably means something, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, and that rules out the idea that falling through the fountain is a crash handler. Because that is not where I ended the dream last night. What made it a middle-of-the-road dynamic dream, though? I didn't even do anything! Okay, what do you got for me, game? Ugh, sound from a grating soundtrack. I know we've heard it before now, but that goes right through my head. And I want to say that I said that the last time I came here and I heard that too. Jeez. Okay, something that I've been thinking about the Kyoto map, and it's not a, a game theory like the alien abduction thing or anything. This... That is some exceptional spatial awareness, Andy. Nice work. <laughs> but like the, the Kyoto map has a lot of statues, a hand, a foot, a head. I like to think that they all belong to the same Buddha, but he's sleeping beneath the earth. You know, kind of like a... Colossus. Are those birds moving this time? Was it a glitch that they weren't last time? Oh, they are. They, they were moving up. Kind of makes me sad that I linked just now. To India? To India. Yes, indeed. That's dull and boring. So, let's explore this way some more. You know, I sometimes want to play this game where... I do things differently to how I normally would, but I think that's exceptionally hard to do because how do I break my own natural programming, you know? Maybe stopping and taking a 10 count? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of because otherwise... Oh, I don't know. I think that's one reason I could do with playing with somebody because, I mean, they can take the controls rather than letting me do whatever it is I do. I mean, I have noticed that I tend to bank to the right a lot, possibly because I'm right-handed, even though I'm controlling movement with my left. This is new. I mean, it isn't new, because I've seen this tile set before, but never from beside the lighthouse like this. Mainly because I pretty much never come up here. But anyway, yeah, I think it's amazing how my brain just doesn't work sometimes. Like, my right hand can hold and grasp and manipulate things, and I can write and draw and be mechanical with my right hand. And then my left hand, biologically identical by all accounts, it can... It just sits there, I guess. You can pick stuff up, I guess. You gonna get it right? How about that? You got it right this time. You didn't stutter or anything. See ya, Two-Face. Enjoy your freedom. You know, I heard there's a way to make that guy spawn downstairs at the bar. But I've never seen it, though. 
What happens if you look at him while you link? Let's find out! I don't know if being here is significant to anything. Is this where the astronaut usually sends me? I'm not really paying enough attention to remember. Spoilers, sometimes when I do this, I drop into autopilot and I don't notice things. My brain just lets words fall out all over the microphone and then I sort of come to and regain consciousness 20 minutes later. I'm going this way! Maybe the sumo guy will be there and everything will happen as it is ought to. Which I do believe I've described as the way that I want things to go in the past. Though I do believe the lack of sumo wrestlers is demonstrating that no, in fact, this is not going to go the way that I want it to go. Though, to be fair, this is one of those things that I feel it's like hacking or whatever. But actually doing it is a lot of hard work and fun, and you feel very accomplished for getting anything to happen. But when you just click a button and get everything in one shot, that bit's kinda boring. I think it's the same kind of deal with this game. If I could just go to the map and suddenly there's what I'm looking for, that wouldn't be as much fun, or it wouldn't make me feel as accomplished as if I get it to happen on its own. Again, I refer back to the idea that organic gameplay is cooler than push button receive beatdown. And now I'm back here. Retracting the thing I just now said, I would love it if I could push the button here and do that stretching thing twice again. Because that was pretty awesome. I mean, especially since it let you see stuff that otherwise is entirely inaccessible. Like they modeled holes beneath the bridge, for example. Alright, let's see if I can... I'll not make the stretching happen, but I mean, get the Zeppelin to do its thing. Once again, it's possible to make the Zeppelin spawn some kind of effect in-game, but every time I've come to do this, the game has gone and done something weird that distracted me. Oh, come on, game, nothing? Nothing at all? Okay, looks like nothing's happening today. So... Let's do something mature. Let's throw my toys out of the pram, go do something else. Yeah, I'm gonna go out of the... I absolutely meant to do that. See, because if, if I didn't stick on that model and I took the tunnel out, then I'd run into the Grey Man. And if I did that, I would lose progress and I would be very, very sad. So I meant to do that. So shut up. Although I think I'm about ready to run into him here because he kind of likes to show up in Happy Town most frequently because, like, irony, I guess. Ooh. Now that's one you don't see very often. The bear chasing the rabbit doesn't show up very often for me. That's a neat one. I don't recognize the painting, but I want to say it's a representation of an actual real life painting. I would say a famous one, but since I don't know what it is, I can't say that's famous, I suppose. And the rabbit sends me to... Oh, the pagoda! Cool. You know, this tile set looks great when you load it in maps that it isn't meant to be in, and the game just throws in all kinds of wacky palette shenanigans on there. I think it's the little cartoon faces that do it, personally. And now I'm here, it kind of reminds me of... Like I say, I was in Chicago recently, and they have a lot of walls and murals put aside specifically to have people cover it in graffiti art. And it makes all of the big, drab buildings look brilliantly colourful and wonderfully well designed. Like the best I've ever seen in England is under a bridge near my house where somebody has sprayed Sorry About Your Wall. It's pretty meta. What if that dragon thing's gonna spawn? The only place I've ever seen it is, well, the, the wall that is now behind me. But I have only ever seen it once, so... What do I know? And the answer to that is more than I care to admit, but less than you'd think. And I think I'm going to head downstairs. Because I never really did that. 
I mean, I, I think I tried once, but I threw myself under the wall. I mean, that sounds like something dumb that I do, right? My my spatial spatial reasoning skills aren't all that great in this game sometimes. Neither are my language skills. Jeez. Although I'm being harsh. I mean, sometimes the game controls aren't all that responsive, so I can't necessarily find myself entirely to fault for failing to navigate properly. That's my excuse, and I'm going to keep saying it until I believe it. Put that in a story once, it was such a sad thing. So yeah, take me somewhere else, Pagoda. Oh, and another story out of... Wait, forget that story, because it's dumb and boring. This is much better. I heard that bird song again, or whatever it is. Do you guys hear that? It's kind of stopped. And of course now I come to stop talking to raise the game audio, the noises go away. I'm sure if you heard it, because otherwise I'm going to look quite the fool. That is a neat looking Masingno wall there, guy. Nice to see you keeping with the Pokemon theme. I see no reason not to run around while I'm out here. The Grey Man isn't going to spawn, so... Enjoy my freedom a little bit, you know? And this is something else I wonder about the Dream Chart. Does running make it more dynamic, or more of an upper, or... what? I think it's amazing that we still haven't sorted out the mechanics of how to land on what square after... how many years, you know? It's, it's like... What's that giant statue outside the FBI headquarters or whatever? Cryptos? It's like that. It's like some sort of giant, amazingly drawn man. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Have I been hacked? Because this looks like the work of a hacker. Ah, whatever. Let's go to the violence district. Oh. Okay, well, never mind then. Amazing drawing man must be the protector of the main player, stopping you from going to the violence district. I like that story. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that and run with it. I have to say, I really like it when I come up with more fleshed out canon than the actual game allows. It's one reason I like the alien theory. It's a nice challenge to try and have to think about everything in relation to one topic. So I reckon this is going to be the last dream for this video, and then we will... I don't know. I mean, I'll sit here and record a third video for the little bundle, but you can do whatever you want. Within reason. Me? I'm going to link with a jaunty-looking ox. And listen to some dreadful music. The instrument set seem the same for... Yeah, and I'm right back here in Kyoto, so... Maybe this will make the dream a little bit more static? I can only speculate, realistically, but... Do you know what? I absolutely have to assume that the answer is going to be yes. Oh hey, yeah, something else that I forgot to mention the last time I was here. Because I only recently learned it and I don't remember being in here before. Apparently there's a translucent model of the old woman inside one of these houses. But she's positioned in such a way that you absolutely cannot see her. I think it was one of the guys on the wiki ended up finding her, because he was using wall hacks or whatever. So, I mean, we know that she's there, but the question is why? I mean, not that I mind so much, because one of my absolute favorite video game easter eggs is hiding something in plain sight, but entirely out of reach. Or even out of view sometimes. I mean, like, um, G-Man from Half-Life. Very good example of that. There's a man in a suit who follows you throughout the entirety of Half-Life 1 and 2, and all you get to see of him, realistically, is a fleeting glance as he watches you from a balcony, or, like, he'll flash up on a TV monitor and then he's gone or something. And nothing happened, by the way. So... I mean, you can be sure that I will keep trying as I come to the river area, but, for now, I'm gonna run this way. I mean, I do know that you'll sometimes see people inside these open houses, or, like, you'll see people run out the door and across the map. I forget if I've shown that in this playthrough yet. 
not that I can particularly show whatever I want. I mean, it depends on the game spawning. You see my previous comments about hacking the game. And you know what? Now that I come to think about it, it's the same kind of thing that applies to my videos. Because for Zombie Hunters 2, I just imported a 100% save file and played through it. For Onir Chanbara, I earned a 100% save file, and you can absolutely tell that I put more time and effort into playing and enjoying the 360 title. Even though the PS2 game was brighter and more colourful, paradoxically. I think that's just one of the pitfalls of being next genified, I suppose. Everything has to be grey-brown. Still, it was a lot of fun, and my friends have all noticed that I was just enjoying screwing around with a game that I love, and that is one of my favourite things to do with this little gaming project. Oh, also, while I'm here, I've learned a little bit about those guys, too. There is a theory that these guys could be a representation of Ebisu, the Japanese god of fishermen, and some other things. I mean, Ebisu is always shown as being in or on the water and having big ears, so... There you go. And yeah, you probably knew this was coming, but I'm I'm gonna head into the flesh tunnel and do some more exploring. Don't read too much into that. Because I know I would. <laughs> and since we have a heated battle going on over here, I'm gonna crash it. Try to work out if something's happening. I'm gonna probably say no. Alright, out I go. So, let's hang out and watch these guys duke it out. However, in deference to my usual behaviours, I will not drop into my usual JR routine. Bag out. Oh, and look at that! Ozeki wins! Jonokuchi! And I don't know what I expected to have happened, but what has happened didn't surprise me in the slightest. I have a little fluff topic anyway, so what the hell, let's go for it. Katamari Damacy 2, there's a level where you have to roll a kid around in preparation to fight a sumo wrestler. And the three wrestlers you have to fight are called Komosubi, Ozeki, and Yokozuna. And those are three progressively higher ranks in sumo wrestling. That's a cute little touch that's mostly lost on the western market. Anything? I'm guessing no, because I didn't find one wrestler, I found two and one one, but... Ah, whatever. <laughs> you know? Not a flattering angle, Mr. Sumo Man. So I'm gonna go over here and link with something. HAKEYOI! Okay, I swear, I am done speaking Japanese for now. Except for when I'm not. It's kinda like when I do singing in my videos. I always say I'm really bad at it and I'm not going to do it anymore, but then I kind of go for it whenever the mood strikes me, you know? Anyway, I am going to go and I'm going to check out this log right over here. Whoa, what was that? Anyone else? Oh, hey! It's that thing I was talking about just now. You sometimes see people running through town and there's one of them. Oh, and I'm faster than she is, so I can hurry up and catch her. Just watch, this is going to be a trap, and she's going to lead me right into the Grey Man. Yeah! Linking is a go! The hell is this music? <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of this weirdery and throw myself down a hole. Double bonus! I'm 25 minutes in, so I can call it a video now. And it was all for nothing. Ah, well. Tune us next time for some more LSD, and until next time, goodbye!